Hi everyone, it's Miss Uduak with AfricanMusicLaw.com. It's Grammy 2016. How exciting. We're down here in Los Angeles. And one of the events I really love attending pre-Grammy has to be the Entertainment Law Initiative Luncheon. It's a time and place where all the power lawyers in America show up and talk the business of music and of course the legal issues that surround the business of music. It's also a time when we honor some of the most amazing, brilliant young minds. This year, the Grammy Foundation is honoring Julie Swidler for Sony Music Entertainment. So it's going to be really exciting and of course we have the student winner that won this year's competition. Come with me, let's have fun. We will see you right after. Why did you decide to apply and go through the process and what was it like writing your paper? Um, well, I do track the Grammy Foundation and their work really closely. I'm really excited about being involved in entertainment law. Um, so I thought this was a good way to kind of get my foot in the door and I also really enjoy legal writing. The piece I wrote is called Survey Says Blurred Lines Call for Reliable Aid in the Adjudication of Composition Infringement Actions. So I wrote the big old blurred line case really hard <laughs> um, and I talked a lot about the inability of layperson juries to fully differentiate between compositions and their sound recording counterparts. And then the piece I wrote kind of advocates for the use of statistical surveying in those cases. A lot of juries are given the sound recordings of each piece and the big problem with the blurred lines case was that um, the concept and feel kind of of both songs were compared instead of the actual underlying composition. Now what is your overall sense for the independent artists today in order to be able to be successful? Independent today? major artists or just artists in general uh, should be informed as to, to what the law is and, and what the landscape is economically out there and you know, I can only speak about the independent approach and it's a pro-competitive one. You are independent if you promote competition in the marketplace. Everything else that the Indies are about flows from this simple definition. If you're comfortable with competition, then you support open systems and transparency. You also support the idea that all of us should be competing on a level playing field. And you support the independence of others, even the independence of your direct competitors, because their independence protects and sustains your independence. When I first heard that I was getting this award last summer, I think my first reaction was, I'm too young. <laughs> I feel like I still have so much more to accomplish. So, you know, you never feel like you're at the point where you're ready to get an award for something that you love doing every single day. It's like, that, that's reward enough. Making music is a collaborative endeavor that requires the efforts of a very wide range of music professionals. And these are the same professionals that many of you here in the room actually represent. He's truly an inspiration to so many of us that have had the chance to spend time with him over the years, including myself. Please welcome my dear friend, our dear friend, Mr. Clyde Davis. I so value my roots, I so value my training as a lawyer, and I knew that the first thing intuitively that I had to do was learn the business. You can't practice law in the abstract. You have to refine, there's no question, you have to really hone your legal ability. You've got to master that expertise. And you've got to be the best lawyer that you can, but you can't do it in an ivory tower. You can't do it abstractly. You've got to understand the business. You've got to understand the underlying problems that come from the business and the environment that you're with. And your recipient this year of this award has done so just without equal, in my opinion. And she really has understood the business. She has immersed herself in the business, whether it's songs or records, whether it be to the A&R person, whether it be the marketing or the promotion or the sales person, to the label chiefs to whom she gives guidance and counsel uh, and advice. I mean, she has immersed herself in it. So if you know that you not only get the best of 
legal advice, but you get the understanding of what the problems are that you're going through. And she exemplifies that, and it has made her so outstanding at what she does. And on a personal note, it is my honor, my privilege, and my personal pleasure to present the Eli Service Award to Julie Swidler. I am lucky to have so many stories. While I was negotiating my very first deal, I was reviewing where I said no and yes with Ted Green, who was at the time Holly Ram's head of business affairs. He said, Julie, why did you say no to 50% recruitment on video? I said, because I didn't know I could say yes. I decided that I didn't want to have that feeling of her again. I didn't want to negotiate things I didn't understand. So over the following years, I made sure to learn what every provision meant in both our recording agreements and our publishing agreements because we were doing both at the time and doing a lot of them. Somehow, I had to convince Prince not to sue Jay Records. During that process, where he thankfully agreed not to sue us, Prince and I had hours of conversation about the music business. We talked about everything from music, family, artists, who he thought was good, who he thought was bad, and whether there was a need for record labels at all, and how horrible all record labels are. He actually asked me if I would ever allow any of my kids to sign to a record label. <laughs> The most important thing is to work hard, be patient, learn everything you can about your craft, and above all, be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. It's a wrap folks, don't forget to log on to www.africamusiclaw.com for your music business and entertainment law news and analysis. Yes, it's your go-to destination. Cheers.